Good evening. And once we have Justice Roshan Dalvi, a former judge from Bombay High Court, one can always expect better things to be learnt. And sometimes when we connect with Justice Roshan Dalvi on the call, then I realize that the topic which we have, or the what we have given the name to the Beyond Laws CLC, it so much resonates with Justice Roshan Dalvi that we not only talk of law and beyond all these topics and building equitable relationship slash leadership in today's topic we will find in this journey that we are talking of the topic which is beyond the law because it talks of leadership and once we talk of leadership it takes the relationship in the more gender perspective and it, we can say it is also part two of the session which we had done on the women's day uh, thank you, ma'am, for accepting our invite and over to you. Thank you, Vikas. And hello, friends. This is the world where we all are equal. And in most of the democratic world, people want to be equal. We want equality with equity so that there is justice and fraternity amongst all of us. Today, we talk about equality between sexes, classes, castes, and all sorts of other equality. But what tops the list, friends, is the gender equity and gender equality. Because half the world is male and half the world is female. And it is now a foregone conclusion. Even the GDP of the country rises when women are in power. And power doesn't mean power struggles. In situations of leadership to exercise things to take beyond and to take people beyond. So friends, in at this cusp that we are, we talk about building equitable leadership in our country, in all the professions, in all the businesses, in all walks of life, including education, opportunities, etc. So friends, I'll take you through my journey of what I consider leadership. A leader is a friend, philosopher, and guide. It is a cliche. He is my friend, philosopher, and guide. He is the person I look up to. She is the one who guides me. So a leader is essentially a guardian of the interest of somebody else. Now, when we have to exercise superintendence and control, then what do we think all along? We think there is a boss and there are all people below him. But today, that is not what any business or any profession really believes in. We believe in teamwork. You must have seen at many times, my team did this. My team, I'll have to get back to my team. That is because... We have teamwork where there is a captain or a guardian or a leader, but not a boss. So for superintendence and control, there is somebody who implies a position of trust, care, custody. That is not control, actually, but in terms, it relates to control. It is not the right of a person but it is the obligation, responsibility, and duty of the person who is in charge to bring along the best of everyone. So friends, now what are leadership skills? The very first thing that we must understand is what skills must we have to become a leader? Everyone would say, I want to be a leader. But would you be merited to be a leader? Would you be merited to take people along to start something anew. We talk about startups. Those are leaderships. Leaderships in everyday life, in every lane and by lane, we can have leaders. So one is you have to be effective and assertive. You have to have clear communication, not only with your peers, not only with your staff, but with outsiders to be a good leader. And for that, you don't have to only talk too much as I'll be talking today. You have to be an active listener. 
because whilst we are listening to people, we learn so much and we can then respond, not really react, but respond to others. Now, this is what we generally call emotional intelligence. We were talking about the intelligence portion, IQ. But today, everywhere, EQ is more important. How you deal with your subordinates is extremely important. How you are dealing with your opponent, for example, in our profession is also very important. And that reflects on how you'll be dealing with the judge. So emotional intelligence, like now the new phrase, social intelligence. How socially um, sort of congenial you are. And as we say, he's a gentleman. Why do we say that? Because there is a lot of social quotient. Now for these, what do these leaders have? They have the thing of ability. That is a quality. You have to adapt to various changes. Now for lawyers, for example, when you are appearing in courts, you would have noticed that every judge demands or requests certain specific things. Some judges would say, read especially in appeals. Some judges do not like reading, but like a, a, a very precise statement. So you give them a chronology of events and dates. This is how you adapt. You do different things in different courts with different judges. You would have to do that same thing in business with different people that you are encountering. This includes practicality. You have to see what is practical for your client. You have to see what is practical for your own profession, for your own business. Are you going to finish this up quickly so that you can do other things of other clients? All these are practical considerations that a leader takes decisions quickly on. Then, of course, it's creativity. Creativity is not only all the time to paint or to create a very good scene. That is only not creativity. But creativity in everyday life would be what and how you are molding yourself as situations demand. Now, these leaders, as I, as I said, are not bosses. They mentor. They network for their staff. They get people along on board. And then you see that the staff does the work well. I'll be giving you at the end of this something what I call home remedies. Of what I have done, for example, those little things that a leader would do, but I don't want to enumerate that now. A leader would also require hand-holding because there are not all people who are as smart as you are. We are all clever in varying degrees, but the degrees really vary. And therefore, when there is someone who cannot cope up, it is for the leader to handhold and not to berate that person. Okay? And for that, we do power balancing. There is someone who is very smart and who thinks everything has to be done quickly, but there is someone who is not, but who wants to do things as quickly. So you have to power balance and allow that to happen. Then comes decision making. And the, these are the organizational goals. In our organization, I would say the justice system, decision making takes the cake. It is not only judges who make decisions. It is clients who make decisions. It is lawyers who make decisions. Decisions to settle the matter, decisions to go on, decisions to make frivolous applications. No, decisions to go to the root of the matter. Whatever that is, it depends upon the discretion, sagacity, and wisdom of that lawyer. In the business field, there should be, of course, profits and risks. Lawyers may make profits. Judges don't make profits, but there are risks for everyone in every profession. And that has to be taken care of. And a leader would do that. Now, therefore, friends, first we must understand the difference between a boss and a leader. You'll find that on the net. But there are certain things which I have picked up from my practice or experience on from the net and from what I have learned from others. Obviously, you know that a boss orders and directs what to do and what not to do. But you may not know that a leader influences and inspires somebody to do that. 
And how do you do that? Especially with your staff, for example. I may give you examples later, but for the staff, you have to see that they are working with you. you a little bit of praise, a little bit of hand-holding goes a long way to inspire and influence somebody. A boss is a good instructor. He says, one, two, three. These are the things that has to be done today before you go home. But a leader is a good model. A leader will show you by doing herself or himself what things have to be done. For example, one judge may dispose of two matters. Another judge may dispose of 22 matters in a day. Just by that model, the judge shows his staff, his lawyers, the litigants in court, how he expects his or her court to go on. He becomes that model. If that model is a good model and people always sit on the fence and they find out and they see what to do, especially the, uh, the subordinates, they would go along. Then, of course, a boss has employees because he's the boss. But a leader has followers. As we know, one is a leader, another is a follower. When we talk about politicians, for example, do we want followers or leaders? We want a leader. They may be their, our servants, but we want them to lead the nation. And by simply following somebody else, by simply doing what a voter would want you to do, to give the vote, you are not a leader. Then respect due to seniority is what a boss will expect, uh, expect because he is obviously senior. But a leader would want respect due to ability, capacity, and his own or her own merit. The boss dominates and the leader supports. The boss fo focuses on structure and procedure. So when you order and direct, you have to be a structured thinker. It's a very good quality to have structure. But together with that structure, you should see that others come along which bosses may not have. But they lay down the procedure and therefore there, there can be work which goes on. A leader focuses on values. When I say values, it would mean what we call merit. The value of an employee, never mind if an employee goes home today because he's not well or his wife is not well or his child is not well. But he is a good employee and therefore he must be kept. That is not what bosses think, but what leaders think. You know a leader, a boss knows how the work has to be done and a leader knows how the work is produced. The boss delegates the tasks and responsibilities. The leader delegates authority so that somebody else has the authority and he would or she would be in the background. That is the making of a leader. Nelson Mandela had said, lead from the back and let others think they are in the front. That is a true aspect of leadership. A boss blames the person who is wrong. The leader shows the thing which is wrong. So that when you show that, the, the, you will immediately find in your subordinates, in your opponents, that this is the way, yes, we can amend ourselves. Now, one of our greatest leader teachers was Chanakya. Kautilya or Vishnu Gupta, whatever you may say. He has laid down various principles of leadership. And there's a lovely book on that, on principles of Chanakya's leadership. He was a fourth century leadership scholar. And he is known to be great in leadership, economics, finance, accounting, politics, management, warfare, military strategy, etc. His Chanakya Niti and Arthasastra has got all of these, which are now being taken as role models in the business schools. He created the first women's spy network called Vishkar. This is a very interesting thing that I found out somehow when I read Chanakya. Now, what does Chanakya say? Praise, give credit, admit mistakes, take blame, and boost morale. That is the hallmark of a leader. You understand emotions, but you should not get emotional. But because and so many people say lawyers should not really take something personally. I don't think that is correct. We are all human beings. 
We may take things personally because we really believe in our cause. It's not wrong. But you have to understand the emotions and the sensitivity around you and not just be emotional. So those are the soft skills when we take people, when we name people and we respect them. Then there is moral superiority, the integrity, role model, and a leader should be unaccusable is what I would say. He cannot be accused of lack of integrity or lack of being a role model. And a role model would be to those people who come to him or her. Then there are customized solutions for different challenges. And Chanakya has laid down several of them. Trust and be trusted is a simple thing. Unless you trust, you cannot be trusted. And therefore, a leader would, even at his own peril or her own peril, trust others. Then you have to be money conscious, but not money minded. And that may be a real uh, teaching for lawyers. You must be money conscious, obviously, because you are in a profession. You've got your own family to support. But you cannot be money minded, because as they say, money is the root of all evil. So, we go on further, Chanakya's principles, a leader gives resources. Not to see a problem, but to solve a problem. So you have to be, but, uh, you have to do what is called blame sharing. Not only brainstorming, but blame sharing. So that you understand who and where there was something which went wrong and you all share it in a team. Then a leader would be proactive. Now there was an interesting incident of a police car what happened was that there were some bank robberies. And this was a case in America. And the bank robberies would not abate. There were so many people who were caught and then they were prosecuted, etc. But the robberies went on happening. The, uh, the, the police uh, sort of were rounding up, etc. But nothing happened. Then what they did, they kept a police car right outside the bank with policemen there. The robber is stopped. You change your image. You do something differently. That is what a leader would do. Then, of course, a leader would command respect, command work and action, and not demand it. If a, leader, if a person, if you as a lawyer, would yourself be very diligent, come to court diligently, do your homework, surely your junior would do the same. That is how I learned from my senior. So that was what he commanded. Balance between multitasking and focus. So that balance is to be well maintained. It is a matter of even management. You have got to do multitasking. They say women are very good at multitasking. Not they say, even I say. We have to do work at home, then we do work in the office, then we go home and do work at home. And we've got three shifts every day. But we do that with ease because we've always done that. And we do that because we love doing that. As they say, you love your work and you'll never work a day in your life. So that is what today's superwoman is. And when a woman wants to be an equal, then of course she would be an equal at home and at work. And that makes her more of a leader than of a boss. And then of course, dignity of labor. Unfortunately, that lacks everywhere. We think, oh, he's only a pune. When we have to get married, we say, but he is a double graduate and I am a single graduate and we cannot marry. Completely wrong notions. If there is division of labor, if we appreciate the work of all, everything gets settled and then we become a leader. It's so fact. So friends in business or in profession, today we have come a long way from the traditional aspects that we always had. This is the senior, this is the boss, this is the, he, he is the managing partner, etc., etc. Where they thought of only power. But today power doesn't help much. Not many people stick around. Not many people have that respect. The rights are coming up more. But today, the interests are the most. Whose interests do we serve as le in leadership? A clerk may come, type, Put, uh, put some stamps on the paper and go home. He is never going to be a leader. But lawyers, professionals, entrepreneurs who want to go further in life have to be a leader. And they have to see not where the power lies, 
but where the interest of them, their clients, their opponents, etc., would lie. And now for that, friends, I would say, you have to develop from the very beginning. The, this has not happened earlier. Just as we talk about patriarchy in the families, that everywhere they say the boy is the bigger asset, the boy only will get education, etc., which of course is dwindling down now. The role of parents is very important. We treat sons and daughters equally. We are making both of them leaders. And instead of making one a, a, a boss and another a subordinate who will always comply with the boss's wishes, no, we are making them leaders. So it's not only balls for boys and dolls for girls, as I always say. It is whatever they need. That is their interest. Whatever they are interested in, that is where leadership begins for them. The role of the government is also important. Accounting for inclusion, inclusion in planning, implementation, development of activities, etc. That would be true democracy. And democracy goes hand in hand with leadership. Because you are not going to have only one dictator. You are going to have a leader and many leaders in different fields in different walks of life. <laughs> but this is not all. The role of a civil society where people come forward, people, diverse people come together, they stay connected, they build new relationships, they learn from one another, they automatically become leaders. So friends, today's catchphrase, diversity, equity and inclusion. Now in the business, they talk about only diversity and inclusion, if you have noticed. Everywhere, I've read books and I've read articles. They talk about, yes, including people and including various kinds of people of various castes, communities, religions, nations, sexes, everything. But they don't talk of equity. We as lawyers think about equity first. But it is diversity, equity and inclusion. So diversity is a variety the ethnic diversity, cultural diversity, etc. I would call it like colors of the rainbow. But equity is the quality of being fair and impartial to give a level playing field and the equity or the equality of treatment. So we treat everyone that is division, that is the, uh, the beauty of labor that we understand and the level playing field. If there is someone who is a little less, you give them a little more time. But that person then comes up on par. So even when there was a very nice uh, video that I had seen uh, where um, they, was, they kept certain whites and blacks together and they asked various questions including do you have shoes? There were so many blacks who said that they did not have shoes but they were in a line and they were going to walk or run a particular distance. Now they have come with shoes. When you have not worn shoes, but you wear shoes at the last minute and you are taking part in some kind of a game, you are going to be left behind. It must be understood then that only equals would then be equals. And otherwise, you have to do power balancing. You have to do that level playing field. Give them the level playing field. Another very important illustration is three stools and the first prize, second prize and third prize. We put a small boy on the top because he's got the first prize. But the third prize person feels that he is inferior. When we put them all on the same stool, no, no matter that they've got the first, second and third prize, they all feel equally empowered. Then comes inclusion. That is a welcoming attitude. Everywhere there should be inclusion. Inclusion now we talk about even transgenders, inclusion of women, inclusion of people of different faiths, different castes, different religions and states in country, even in countries. All together you get the best of all the worlds. So the world for all and all for the world would be inclusion. Now friends, what is the ambit of this DEI, I have already told you, color as in the US, 
keep them differently, no blacks and whites. One very important, uh, very, very nice uh, uh, kind of an incident that I read about was a small boy goes to school for the first day. He comes home and is very happy. He has met so many friends, but he has made one special friend, as we always do. There's always someone more important than others in any party that we talk about at all. So he tells his mommy, Tom did this, Tom did that. I told Tom this, Tom and I went there. And the mother is saying, oh, he, he likes Tom. The mother asks the child, is he black? And the child looks at the mother and says, I'll tell you tomorrow. And you can understand the importance of color. Okay. Same thing in our country. We are all browns. Of different shades of brown, but we are all browns. So we don't talk of color. But we've got a very interesting thing to talk of caste. We've got untouchables, which Mahatma Gandhi said is a plot on Hinduism. And Mahatma Gandhi said that those untouchables are Harijans. They are the children of God. So in India, how do we have to have the equal playing field so that we can have leaders for the future? And that was to ensure representation of all communities. And I don't want to go into reservations and things like that, but to have inclusion, to see that on merit, if there is someone, we include them. The other is class. Again, the same thing almost, untouchability. It is prohibited in our constitution. There are only two prohibitions in the constitution. One is prohibition against human trafficking and child labor. And two, prohibition against untouchability. Two of the greatest national shames when they are dead. Okay. So again, inclusion. When we don't have those two prohibitions. And tribes. In Africa, they have tribes. People of the same kind of culture, doing same things, they sing the same songs, they have the same dances, look down and fight with people who have different songs and different dances. They also can come together for diversity, for inclusion. And of course, gender. The most important, because every single person has to be counted in that, the men and the women, and now even transgenders. So in India, we call it Shiva and Shakti. In China, they call it yin and yang, all together, and get the best of the both worlds. Now, diversity and inclusion, I told you, in business and government. They don't talk of equity. So, this at least one woman director in every public companies, we have got it in our uh, Companies Act now. We've got it in the company's rules. And where did it begin? It began in Germany. It took hold. And people felt that, oh, yes, there are girls who can do the same thing as boys. There are women who can do the same thing as men. And therefore, they should be included. When Bill Gates went to Saudi Arabia and he was giving a lecture to youngsters, he saw that there were all boys on one side and all girls on one side. And uh, when they asked him, so what do you think? How far will Saudi Arabia go in the 21st century? This was in the 20th century, about 1999 on that side. Bill Gates said that if you are going to utilize only half the talent, I think you'll go only half the way. Today, in Saudi Arabia, there are so many women who are doing such good work, including the crown prince. And he has made so many uh, uh, legislative amendments, more so in favor of women. And that is how we go further. So what they say in America is that you should be gender blind. Gender blind is a term that shows that you take into account a human being, not a man or a woman. And therefore, there would be merit-based employment policies. Now, in the technology sector, we have 35% participation of women, transgenders, disabled people. But how did this participation begin? This participation mainly began, it was there in the Scandinavian countries only. And then throughout the world, it began in Rwanda. In 1991, there was a war between Hutu and Tutsi. Hutu and Tutsi were the two tribes. And 
thousands of men were killed. Because the men were killed, they did not have men in parliament. So the widows and the others took over. And today Rwanda has the majority of women in the parliament. Except Scandinavian countries which have almost equal at all material times. Rwanda is the only country which has that. So this was by some kind of constraint, you can say. But we may not be in that situation. We have to do it by way of choice. So sharing diverse thoughts and active participation, showing capabilities of both, is what the participation in right from the parliament to the corporations, technology sector, in our professions, everywhere is required. Now equity. We are lawyers. We are trained in equality, which has equity. When we ask for orders, which are we ask for orders which are equitable. When we think about uh, laws and we interpret them, we think about whether they are equitable laws. And if they are not, then they are challenged. So now, 2024, the International Women's Day, uh, under the United Nations uh, Secretary General, he said, invest in women you will accelerate progress. That, of course, is now a foregone conclusion. They say even the GDP of the country, it becomes better when all the women are involved in businesses and in professions. So women have to be heard, understood, recognized, and rewarded. In, and where, where do we do this? In finance, employment, unpaid care work is which very important because you may not find it in a patent situation, but these are latent realities of uncared, unpaid care work. You care for your parents, you care for the children. You are not paid, but there is value. And a leader would value value. Okay. So even in security and dignity of life. So now when we have diversity without inclusion, then what happens? It is like having many trees. We have our societies where we plant many trees. But the environmentalists have said that this will not make a forest because there is no biodiversity. You only have a green cover. You may have a shaded area. That, of course, is good. You may have some more oxygen because plants give out oxygen. But there is no biodiversity. And therefore, the, re uh, the, uh, the refurbishing of nature cannot take place if you are going to have a cemented, concretized uh, compound and only have trees. So without inclusion, only having diversity, you have, you have to have some kind of reservation, so you have that reservation. But you don't include actually, spiritually and emotionally the people who are there. Then the result is workplace harassment. People are there. There may be uh, uh, sexual harassment, there may be class harassment. There may be anything. They are there. Oh, but you don't like them. So they are away. And then that inclusion, uh, that, that diversity is of no use. So there would be perpetuation of prejudices. And this would cause that kind of situation. Now in the AI systems, the artificial intelligence, there are so many modules you know, we've got bank modules, we've got uh, modules for payments, and all of those are now artificially intelligent. So these payment modules, admissions to colleges, opportunities. Now there are uh, several companies which artificially even employ people. But when the system is worked out, if you're going to have this kind of diversity, you have to have five so-and-so, four so-and-so, ten so-and-so, there is no inclusion. And without that inclusion, that diversity becomes meaningless. It causes, in fact, more problems. India ranked 127. This is very interesting for us to consider. 127 out of 146 countries in the gender gap, uh, gap report of last year. And there was a lot of error. What nonsense. There, is, there are so many Indian women who are working and now they are in all prime positions, etc. No. That is only a very small part of our population. And the unorganized sector is the main part. And therefore, that gender gap persists. And when there is that gender gap, 
there is less of opportunities, less of employment, and consequently less of the merit that would come out. So, we reduce disparity. How do we reduce disparity? Various illustrations. In Scandinavia, maternity absence and maternity absence, even paternity absence afterwards, is not only that you take a one-month leave, but it is that you are given part-time job opportunities. The same organization may tell you that all right, you work <clears throat> from this time to that time. COVID has given us a great um, out outlay on this, that we work online just the way we are working now. Uh, within one minute, I will go back to my home. There is no transport cost. So that kind of part-time job opportunities are now available. And there could be, of course, long live with or without pay so that you come back. And that is called onboarding today. Why onboarding? Again, ultimately, you're going to create those leaders. And statistics has shown that when a woman especially goes on her maternity leave, when a child um, uh, goes to school, comes back, she comes back with greater vigor. She wants to now take, take on a good role. She wants to now be an equal and she will give her very best. Okay. Then there, there would be transport problems. So when we are going to reduce disparity, we are going to have women. What we really require, there are now pink buses in even Lahore. There are pink taxis, taxis and buses and even um, heavy vehicles taken up by women, run by women and for women. And the uh, organization makes all those things possible. We had this discussion in the Anujgar case, which was in Delhi. We means I was not included, but I've read about it. And uh, the uh, lawyers who were appearing, they were told that Anuj Garg challenged the notification of the excise department, which prohibited women from working in bars after 9.30 p.m. That is the Anuj Garg case. She said, I am capable of going home myself. My brother can come me. And if I am not, give me transport. But don't say that I cannot work afterwards because when I'm going to work up to 9.30, I will earn very little. And I'm capable of earning more. So I want to be. So it is for the woman to decide, not for the government to decide what would be her protection. Okay? The government has to maintain law and order, but not by taking away rights. So safe transport for women is extremely important. We have train coaches which are for women. We have buses where, which, have, which have seats for women. Certain things, and then there, there can be only train, uh, women buses, trains. All these have gone a long way. Then there would be cheap transport for the poor. So we have our buses, especially in Bombay, there is a fantastic bus uh, network. We may, you and I may not use it, but there is, and poor women can do that. They take Otherwise, what happens is a woman will have to wait for that poor transport which is available and she would waste time. She would reach home late and then she's got to do everything that she's got to do. There's no uh, layback on that. So cheap transport has to be provided for the poor so that this working class go home. That is how also we will reduce disparity. Employment for the marginalized is also important. They talk about transgenders, tribals, but whoever is marginal in a given society, that those employments, they also would reduce this fact. In fact, there are people who say that a simple thing, like not bargaining, if you can afford a thing, paying whatever the salesman says is uh, the price of the product will reduce this fact. And it relies upon us to do that. If we are going to really be able to afford it, why not pay for it? That is, of course, an, on a different plane, but the same principle of reducing this debt. So now this we have talked about everyone, but there are various niche that each one would have. And the main thing in gender is the leadership styles of men and women. Now, men's leadership style, good, very good, but it is transformational. 
this is this organization makes 100 rupees profit i want to make 200 rupees profit so i'll transform it they do it exceptionally well uh, sorry sorry a woman would transform it even though she would not have a particular aspect in a transaction but men is transactional leadership this is the contract and i have to make this much money in that contract this is my client and i have to make this much money i don't care what happens to the opponent what happens to the entire court system what happens to the court i have to make money if my fees don't come i don't work so it is transaction a woman's is as i already told you mentoring guiding and nurturing nurturing people nature and nurture that is what the catchphrase is in businesses men's is giving orders for decision and that is their leadership. Then the focus on leadership. The focus is on respect, inspiration, teamwork. Let everyone come. And for men, the focus is on supervision and performance. Performance would become better quite often. But it doesn't stay for long. There are many employees who will leave because he doesn't like the boss. But many employees won't leave if they like the boss. And it is not that all men are like that. It is that this is a generalized statement. I have worked with many, many men who's, who are transformational and who are inspired, uh, in, uh, who are sort of, I would say, inspiring trust and confidence. Then the women attract and retain top talent. So they themselves know and they find out men would compete with top talent. Every man would say, I want to be the best. A woman may not say, I want to be the best, but give her best. That is her best, generally. Then there are those women are strong on non-financial indicators. This is an actual statistical study that when women are, even in government, in, in uh, say, uh, the administration, women at home also, what will they care about? Education, insurance, Health. These are their top priorities. For a man, it is financial indicators. How much I'm working? What is it that I make? Some man asked his sister, who was an NGO and doing such human good work, but what do you make? She said, I make a difference. So women are task oriented. We have to do this work, we are going to do it. Every leader should be task-oriented. But a leader can also be target-oriented. And targets have to be met. It is not a bad quality. It is only a quality which is in present time excellent. But in future, it may not be excellent. Because once the target is met, you may have a burnout. So those leadership styles may not go that far. Then there is community building. Women want to have other women to work with, etc. That is generally there. But men network very nicely. Women have no time to network. I always say I don't network. I only work. I work and I go home. I am happy doing what I have got to do. I always did that. But the networking is also a leadership quality, which really men have. They have got all the time for networking, actually. Then women are good at originality and creativity. They say the right side of the brain and the left side of the brain. And both these sides must work together. So the creativity of a woman and the analysis and innovation of a man. They work together, they get wonders. This was a very important study that people realized in America also. After the last great recession, of 2007-2008. I've spoken about that quite often. It is called group think. All the financial analysts were men. Two women have written a book on Wall Street. One is the women of the street and one is fool's gold. And Susan Harara have written, has written that it is not that as if to say the men are born with some kind of special DNA. It is a matter of education and knowledge. And you can do that job just as much as the men did. So that originality which would have come 
if there were women also financial analysts and in all those three sectors which i told you the recession would not have hit so badly uh, i have seen an ad of mahindra and mahindra tractors and uh, in that ad uh, a man is asked to move a tractor before he is given a job he cannot move it then a woman comes her name is shakti and she moves the tractor with ease so the men are wonderstruck and they say oh my how is it that you did it ye to bahut badi baat hai so uh, this is not aasan they say she says aasan hota to sab kisan hote and she did it these are the ways in which they get around different ways of working to achieve the best end then you create an organizational structure an organizational structure is a horizontal structure it is not a vertical structure it is called an onion shaped uh, business structure so on the top there are few people in the middle there are many people working and on the lowest rung also there are few people okay but when you have a hierarchical structure it is a pyramidal structure the boss is on the top that is his leadership but like a boss then they have vice president president and then there are vice presidents etc there are few people on the top not many people can then reach the top and there are many many people on the lowest rung so unless they are treated well they are not going to give the job satisfaction they are not going to get job satisfaction and give their all then women have a culture of sisterhood we help one another etc men have a culture of brotherhood and brotherhood has been there for eons that we say that there should be fraternity all of us in our fraternity are equal but do you include all classes all genders all states into that brother the interesting thing is the wranglers and the stranglers there is a club in wisconsin university called the wranglers and stranglers in the uh, literature department and when the uh, the, the students are studying literature and creative writing then they enter a club and the girls wrangle with one another they they talk about other people they criticize but the boys have one cutthroat competition and they strangle one another also i don't mean that they are murderers but they are called wranglers and stranglers and generally what is the position generally in our society wrongly we believe that women have more um, sorry that women have more competence and less confidence men have more confidence and less competence the book becoming by michelle obama she writes about what she saw when she went to college she said men were having so much of over confidence and they would talk all sorts of give go all answers and ultimately after their answers are given we find out that there is nothing much in it women would know that but they don't have that much of confidence and that is to be developed to be a leader so friends now for leadership we work in all areas and all areas of work are encompassed we don't talk of leadership only for our politicians or things like that it is in corporates it is among lawyers the police have now leadership qualities and they are taught professors and researchers require leaders cyber sleuths always work in a team and there is leadership ngos and councillors have always worked as leaders and not as bosses law makers the legislators are also leaders and they can uh, in leadership they can discuss various laws and give out the best to us the executives of course there there would be administrative and public service etc there would be there should be leaders in journalists columnists commentaries etc also be require leadership writers and the entire civil society so now some of these little things that matter for leadership as i told you i'll give you some home remedies we have to be exemplary to be a leader set some kind of an example 
to our subordinates. How? A simple thing I was told that when a judge said, switch off the lights, there is a pune and a havalda. They've got some kind of hierarchy, which is rubbish actually, but they have it. So when the judge told that havalda, he said, Ti maja kaam nai. this is not my work. So I thought, how many seconds is it going to take? I started switching off myself and I never told anyone, okay, it's not his job. Switching off fans and lights is just on my way out. Always, my employees switched off. I went to TIS to give a lecture and we were in uh, the director's room. Because I'm a guest lecturer, I went straight there. When we came out, the director switched off the lights and the fans. But when I went to the class, which was after their recess time, six fans were on, all the lights were on. The students had not done that. These are going to be our future leaders. Okay. So fans, aces, pick up things, put them in the right order. It's okay if somebody else has dropped, you can sit, go down and pick it up. It does a lot of good for our body also. That is a small example that every leader must show. And many shows that he becomes a leader automatically. Then you understand the dignity of labor. Pune's work. We had a strike, a one-day strike in our court. And I had decided to work on that strike too. The strike was of class 4 employees. Uh, I think it was up to class 4 and 3. So only my associate would be with me because she is a class uh, 2 employee and I would be in the court with the lawyers. But my pune took out the first 10-15 matters one day before and kept on my table. I could just pick up everything and deal with it. I would not have known the pune's work. I would not have known from where to take out all those briefs. Only he knew that. And because he did that work, I could take up the matters. Then we understand that somebody else's time is as precious as ours. So it's not only that we be punctual. Yes, that is also respecting somebody's time. But to allow someone to go is also knowing how precious their time is. And especially the women who, as I told you, and as you all know, would be having the second shift in a house. There are women who just rush out after the, when the court ends, when her work uh, ends. There are men who may stay, who may talk, who may gossip, who may smoke, who may do many things which women don't do and which is hardly even noticed. So I'd like you to notice that. And when we give them that time, our employees are more than satisfied than when we give them some kind of a present or some kind of money. Then that they are agents of change. When we be agents of change, we differently have education, boys and girls together. The right side and the left side of the brain working together to make a project comes out beautiful. In employment opportunities, you have all sorts of people, transgenders, you have somebody from another state, you have somebody who is brown and black, all get employment opportunities on merit. And then, of course, the small size of our families. So we move from patriarchy to partnership. And then I would say, friends, to lead the people, walk behind them. Thank you. Good evening, ma'am. And I think after this session, from corporate world to professionalism, as well as from home, one has been able to take everything. And there are so many brownie points. And if one watches this video, I will, I'm quite sure that since there are too many takeaways, they will actually cherish it. And we are totally blessed that you keep on sharing your knowledge. Everyone stay safe, stay blessed. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All the best.